you can't grow if you're holding on to the weight, like if you're holding on to the anchor. Uh, here in Miami, like there is no anchor, like unless you're on a boat. This is where it all begins, so say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts. This is where they die. This is where we come to win, we come to fly. This is where we make our dreams come to life. Welcome to Innovation City. Welcome to Innovation City, a podcast featuring the innovators, creators, and disruptors who are fueling innovation in emerging markets across the country. My name is Tyler Kelly. I'm here with my co-host, Leanne Buchanan. Hello, everyone. And we have a really special episode today. We're here with Mojo. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. I cannot wait to talk to y'all. Mojo, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your art and how you use it as a tool of change and impact. But first off, I want to start with a couple of questions so folks can get to know you. What's your government name? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, my real name is Anthony Reed II. Okay. Just mm-hmm. just, just for those who would want to know your government <laughs> just name. Just so you know. Yes. So, Mojo, we, have, we know each other really well. We've had some grand adventures that I'm sure we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. But the question that I love to start the conversation off with is this. What is your superpower and how did you come to discover it? Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> I think that was like a trick question. So uh, in Ghana, we were discovering our superpowers. And um, during the, the talks and everything, the superpower that we discovered um, is that my superpower is spiritual alchemy. And that came about just basically just how I'm creating art and just like how I want to move around uh, in this space, in this world. Like I'm just being conscious of my human connectedness with everyone else. So with that in mind, like that is how I'm reflecting like out into the world, basically. Emoji, you mentioned you're an artist and we're gonna talk so much about the various art projects and pieces you've worked on, but where did your artist's journey begin? Talk to us a little bit about when you first discovered a love for art and how it has evolved over time. Well, I discovered art as a kid. Like I was a kid that was drawing Super Mario, Sonic on the back of my homework, uh, getting in trouble. (laughs) Uh, Maybe that's how I started disrupting. Um, And then my mom just getting this call from my teacher basically saying like, hey, like, you know, Anthony uh, is pretty good. Like I would love to spend some time with him and teach him charcoal and things like that. So that's like second, third grade, like when it started to be that. Um, I think the most pivotal moment uh, I can have a couple. One is the death of Michael Brown uh, in St. Louis, like where I'm from. Uh, my mother's like lives five minutes away from where he was shot on Canfield. Um, and I was at the barbershop. So, and that also during that time I was teaching at the community college, like uh, Flores and Valley. Um, that was the first piece. I think the second time that really made me um, I guess want to disrupt a little bit more. And also it made me figure out like, uh, and just be more decisive of what I want to do is when George Floyd was killed and uh, Amaya was shot. And those two like really depressed me a little bit because I was doing art before that, like being like a professional and stuff. But after those two, like I was really depressed and I was, but I also was like tired of, um, recycling the, the the narrative of like of of us just like not being able to progress. I was tired of that. So on Instagram, like if you look back, like I had this black picture, just like like black background and write white words that I'm done talking and I'm just making art. Like mm-hmm. I, I completely stopped investing my energy in all other stuff. I was like, I just want to put out something that means something to me. Um, so in that definitive moment this is the end of 2019 i finally painted overtown the the picture with the the six um like black kids like enjoying their life and chilling that i uh debuted that here uh at the cic and then right when george floyd was murdered because i was tired of seeing like the negative imagery i like reposted overtown put like 180 bucks behind it like on instagram and was like with no intention of selling it, no intention of selling prints, no intention of 
people knowing who I was, I was just tired of seeing all the other stuff. I just put that out there. And that is when like the influx like came Mm -hmm. like new people, um, new opportunities. And it was just people like, yo, Mojo, what do we do? Um, And so that was those are the definitive moments um, for me. So, Mojo, you talked about your evolution in art being heavily informed by the the killing of mm-hmm. of black men mm-hmm. at the hands of police and otherwise. Mm-hmm. What impact do you want your art to have on the world? You know, the reason why I make art today is specifically to use it as a reflection of me learning about myself, uh, wanting to be the change first, then instead of me asking for things to change, like I got to be it first. Um, and also to show what I want. Like, so like the art of manifestation and law of attraction and all of that, like, I'm just basically like, Hey, I want like happy kids. I want, you know, when you see like a, uh, a a picture of an African-American man or African-American woman that like, it's not intimidating. It's powerful. It's beautiful. It's, it's life. Like this is a human being. Um, and that also is why the execution has evolved. You know what I mean? So like I went from using acrylic paint in my comfort zone, uh, which I've learned that that is the, another word for plateauing. Um, so I decided to, with the um, NIA project, um, artist residency, I decided to get rid of all of that um, acrylic paint and step up and do oil paint. Wow. And so now it's like that responsibility is heightened um, and just stepping into it, like leaning into that, you know. Mm-hmm. So you talked about you were in the barber shop. Was that in St. Louis or Miami? St. Louis. And so that moment obviously was a catalyst but you got here somehow. So tell me about how you got from St. Louis to Miami after that. Absolutely. So I came here specifically for my girl, Alejandra (laughs) Estefania. She's a dope artist. Um, my, my best friend, my right hand, my lover, like my soon to be wife. Like she's the reason why I one had the confidence to, to move here. One way ticket, one way ticket. (laughs) And then, um, which, which was faith too. Um, and not having a backup plan. And I came out here like specifically for her. And then because, you know, we both do, you know, we both do art. She was doing a mural like at the JDC with um, uh, Herman and his awesome nonprofit organization called uh, Hope, Hope Murals, where they like do murals inside of the juvenile detention center. So they're trying to bring the Wynwood feel inside of the um, juvenile detention center. So it kind of like, you know, uh, just up, up, uplift those kids in there. So she was doing that mural. So I get off the plane, change my clothes into paint clothes and go straight to a mural. Um, and so that's how I like came to Miami. Now, Leanne and I, you know, Miami, for those of you watching on video, Leanne is Miami. I am St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And then back and forth. Yes. <laughs> There's so many like connections and we see it because we, we play it out. Mm-hmm. For the audience, though, so somebody coming from St. Louis to Miami, what do you, what did you experience? What did you see? What was the same? What was different? Man, um, so much was different. I think the my mindset changed a lot uh, because I was afraid of everything. Like I was afraid to drive. Like so I was like, man, am I? I get pulled over. <laughs> uh, I, I was afraid to get in the open ocean. Like cause I was like, man, I can't see nothing past this line, this horizon line, the sky and ocean. That's creepy. Um, it, I, I had a lot of um, uh, hesitation when I first came here, uh, and I had to literally change that and like get adjusted and acclimated to Miami. Love the weather. Uh, that's definitely a plus. Um, the difference between St. Louis and Miami is just, it's just, it's the greenery. It's the, it, and this, I think the attitude is different. The attitude is very different. Um, I think that there's a lot of people that are imaginative here and they like make the imaginative real. I think in St. Louis, there's people like us that want to do that. And then we're talking to people that may not have that same imagination and like, like, how, like, do you really want to do that? Like, maybe you should just do one thing and not all of these other seven things you want to do. Just do one. 
you know. So it was very like limiting there a little bit. Um, but I, I understand it because like maybe there is this piece in St. Louis where you want to like hold on to something, but it's like you can't grow if you're holding on to the weight, like if you're holding on to the anchor. Uh, here in Miami, like there is no anchor, like unless you want a boat. But um, but it's sometimes. just yeah sometimes yeah. sometimes not crashing anchor. into other right? boats. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but yeah, I, that's that's the difference. And also the art scene is really really big, um, and there's a lot of people that respect the art here. You know, so it's it's really cool. So Mojo, you talked a lot about your growth in Miami being one of getting over your fears. Oh yeah, learning to swim. Mm -hmm. um and at, at, in, in my 30s <laughs> you, go, you gotta tell people you go, they can't they it's can't fine, tell. You know. uh, but but mojo one of the one of the experiences that you had recently was having a new experience um mm -hmm. traveling getting yep. outside the country talk mm -hmm. to us about a little bit about the project experience as artist in residence but more importantly what you took from it and how it impacted the way that you move through the world now First of all, like, like Leanne is not showing um, her cards here. Like, if it wasn't for Leanne, like, pushing me to get my passport, like, I don't think I, like, would have went. So, like, I had a lot going on, like, in my life uh, trying to get my passport. Uh, and specifically, it was just, like, getting um, partial and visit, uh, partial custody and visitation rights with my son, um, which is awesome because he's going to be moving here, uh, yes. which is dope. Um, so it was a lot of like work doing that and then just like, you know, getting organized financially, basically. And when that happened, I was able to get my passport. And, and Leanne was like, <laughs> she was like, you're going to this. So get your pass, get your passport. What is this for those that don't know? In getting the passport, um, I was awarded to go and be an artist resident with the NIA project in West Ghana. This is my first time ever leaving the country first time ever uh always wanted to like i was the guy like yeah man i want to go to the motherland i want to go to africa i need to feel that i need to put my hand in the sand like all the things that i was like thinking i want to put my hand in this. i took a picture of that by the way um but i really wanted to go there but i didn't know the extent of what i was going to see when i went to ghana like so that was it was it definitely changed my life a hundred percent. I I appreciate you for that, Leanne, and um and the Nia project like that. It really did. Um, and also to be able to just go and just do the leadership training and just do that and just be there. And I think that really helped too because when I came back, like I couldn't wait to paint because I was I was really like at a moment where I like didn't want to paint. Like I was kind of like bored of painting and stuff like that. Uh, but going to Ghana it made me really think about like who I was because for a minute I didn't know who I was when I came back I was like I was walking around no shoes no socks <laughs> uh, my, my t-shirt was hot I was, like, I was used to the humid weather you know what I mean like it, it was it was definitely a, a, a change but it was a beautiful one mm -hmm. tell us more about that experience and how it influenced your artwork when you got back you know before going to Ghana um like, like I, again, like I talk about that um, comfort zone a lot. And that's something I discovered, like in myself, like I had uh, a comfort zone. And I also realized, again, that that is another word for plateau, like where you have this glass ceiling that you feel like, oh, this is as far as I'm going to go. Like, or acrylic paint is exactly where I need to do. Or even also feeling like as an artist, like I can't make a mistake because People are counting on me to make artwork and it's got to be dope and it's got to look like this. Um, and it, it kind of uh, stifled my creativity and experimentation phase as being an artist and stuff. So getting on the plane, like I was probably the most excited to go to Ghana, dude. Like even though we had the layovers, we had to go to New York, like we like it was crazy. But at the same time, I was like, yo, like we're about to go to another country. Like I like and that that's. I felt like a kid for a minute. Um, but going there, at first, like, I felt like, man, wait a minute. Like, there are certain things that need to change for me to feel comfortable here. Like, you know, like, where's the hot water at? Like, why am I washing my clothes in a bucket? Like, you know, I got to brush my teeth using uh, bottled water. Like, you know, things like that. Um, and and then, then I realized that this isn't 
this isn't how I should behave in this moment. Like I need to be a little bit more like um, receptive and understanding of another another culture. And that's when I was like, okay, cool. Then I, I mean, I'm going to look forward to taking this cold shower, lukewarm water <laughs> in the morning, you know what I mean? To help wake me up, you know? Um, and it was, it's just, that was just like huge. I think the thing that really changed me though was Cape Coast Castle. That really, that changed everything for me. Um, for those who don't, for those who do not know what Cape Coast Castle is, it's like one of the first slave castles um, in in Africa, right? Like it's one of them. And to first of all, it was like a juxtaposition type of thing, because like that that was the word for me in Ghana was juxtaposition and, and just contrast. That was, those were the two words. Um, getting inside of the castle, first of all, it was like. It wasn't eerie. Like that was at first. It wasn't eerie when you first walk in. But then I'm also seeing like family reunions walk around too. Like like groups of family, like, yo, we finna walk around and listen to this, like listen to this awesome storyteller tell us about and historian about what was in there. And but then also we we're walking through like the 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 cells and like standing in them and sitting in them. Like I, I couldn't stand up in some of some of like I was like immediately like sitting down. Um, and just, and then also walking through the other ones and then seeing a shrine too, like you, you seeing shrines and you seeing people like showing love and like, um, like giving up like money and things like that and, and prayers and writing things. And I, I, I remember like talking to Dr. Senyo, like we were talking a lot, like on that trip. And he, he said something to me that like, like change. He was like, man, I'm really, I want to apologize on behalf of all Africans to my African American brothers that we, we were a part of this. Like we sold our own like brothers and sisters into this. And then you realize that in the stories and, and in, in real life that because it did happen that like you didn't have a choice, mm -hmm. like you did not have a choice in your life and you're coming and you're coming and going. And so leaving Cape Coast Castle, and this is leading to why how it uh, impacted my artwork, was that I feel like because of that, I have a choice to do something. Like I straight up have a choice because they didn't. And when I realize that I have a choice, then it's like, now I got a responsibility to do something with this because otherwise I'm wasting everything that just happened if I don't do something. And I can't just be out here making artwork that's not going to help anybody else or it's not going to um, like make me a better person. Um, and it, it just it was that responsibility that was like super important. And I, I felt it immediately after that. It's such an amazing insight from what sounds like a transformative experience. It was such an honor to watch you uh, evolve in that respect. I think it's time. For the lightning round? I mean, I, I mean, I haven't been checking, but I'm pretty sure it's it, it's. I'm a talker, by the way. Don't so. I know it? <laughs> <laughs> I I was I did not travel in the bus that that Mojo traveled in, but I heard Mojo would talk from 4 a.m. to 12 o'clock at night if we were in the car for like 14 hours. So I know you were a talker. Yes. Um, but I would <laughs> speaking of talking, Mojo. <laughs> Lightning round. These are short responses. Okay, here we go. What question would you ask a fortune teller? What is my future? Okay. How do you show love to others? By being it mm -hmm. first. What is something new you recently tried and loved? Uh, two things. Oil painting and cooking. Ooh. What you been cooking? Man, I've been crushing it with uh, with breakfast sandwiches, <laughs> <laughs> with TJ's ingredients, Trader Joe's. Yo, hmm. what moves you to tears or gives you goosebumps? <sighs> um, people's real, authentic stories give me goosebumps. Like for real stories. I'm gonna ask for a bit of a long answer, um, but what was the most defining moment of your childhood? Mm. I may know the answer to this, but the defining moment of my childhood. 
Hmm. You know what? I honestly, and and it it definitely has changed because I've gotten older and I have a son and I understand it. It's like definitely my father's death was definitely transformative for me. Uh, but I realized that I could learn something from that and that his life wasn't in vain for losing it so young. Um, and it just taught me how, what I need to do as a father now, like for my 16 year old son. So that is, that was transformative for me. Final question. What would you do if you were not afraid? Oh man, <laughs> I, I would do everything. Uh, I'm, um, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? <laughs> um if i do if i wasn't afraid i guess honestly is to continue being myself like continuously like learn something new about myself and just keep being that and embrace anything that uh that i'm afraid of like mm -hmm. swimming you <laughs> oil, did it though uh, oil paint uh you know getting on a scaffold or oh, i'm sorry getting on a hydraulic lift uh spray painting all, all the things i've ever been afraid of like they they've been fruitful if I like stepped into it. I mean, I could go on. You could go on. <laughs> I could go on. Well, before we do, um, how can people get in touch with you? Website, social media? Um, yes, you can get in touch with me exclusively on Instagram. That's the easiest way because I put a lot of stuff up there. So Instagram is um, at got the mojo, G O T T H E M O J O. Um, my website is the same, www.gotthemojo.com. HealingWithHughes.com will be uh, functioning uh, at the end of whatever this week is, November something <laughs> later. Um, but that'll be up. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Well, Mojo, we've had so many conversations <laughs> yeah. having spent two weeks in Africa together. Yes. But this was definitely high on the list of getting to know you more and also having you share a little bit more of your magic with everybody. I appreciate that. Thank it you guys. It was a pleasure meeting you. Man, thank you guys for having me. This is awesome. Thank you, Mojo. Thank you for listening to Innovation City. If you like this episode, you can find more episodes at innovationcity.co or anywhere where you watch or listen to podcasts. Please subscribe, rate, and review, and we'll see you next week. This is where it all begins, so say goodbye To all your fears, all your doubts, this is where they die This is where we come to win, we come to fight This is where we make our